Okay, guys, here we go. <clears throat> this is, um, okay, I'm just going to read this, okay? It says, sending love to my favorite radio show, The Woody Show. Okay, that has a couple of connotations. The Woody Show. They love your music. The show is Woody, who looks just like you. Well, I would assume that saying that you probably weigh at least 270, 280, have long hair. I no longer have long hair and only weigh 210. So most likely you don't look like me, but if you do, that's even better. And then Greg, who always thought you were sexy, well, yes, and shows you to everybody else because I am a sex god. Now we all know that. <clears throat> and there was a there was one tour where I encourage bra throwing on a first couple of shows. Well, word of mouth caught on. And I would guarantee you, and I know a lot of bands had bra throwing for a period of time, but I guarantee you this, we, I would double down any bet that, and what the lighting crew did is every bra that was thrown on stage the next day when they put the lights up, they attached those, uh, the lighting rigs with bras. And we had a count of almost 6,000 bras hanging from the lighting truss. And also, there was one we didn't hang. It was the biggest bra you have ever seen in your entire life. I don't know, it, beyond me, way beyond me. I, and I picked it up and I was asking for the woman who wore it to come up and I never saw her. It was, I, maybe it was a joke. <clears throat> maybe that's why nobody came forward because if somebody had that big of breast, I think they would come forward and take acknowledgments for it, but maybe not. But I, now, you know what? I never thought this until I'm talking to you guys. That was a joke. But I, I used it every night after that. And the bras just kept coming. And we, I guarantee you it was more than 6,000. <clears> and they, did, they stopped hanging them. They didn't have enough room. And they, they just kept coming. And that was a... Oh, it had to be more than 6,000. Because that was a 48-show European arena tour. Uh, yeah, that was, um, and no, that wasn't the tour. We set, we set the record and there was a, a, a arena outside of London called Wembley Arena. <clears throat> they changed the arena and, and we went back there and played that arena and it's, it's 5,000 seats larger or whatever, but this arena, Elton John held the record for Wembley, most Wembley arenas, right? And uh, Elton likes to uh, reject himself onto other people a lot. And he went around doing... Anyway, I broke his record. We did 16 sold-out shows. But he never wanted to acknowledge that, and he continued to say, and even to this day, I have the most arenas sold in Wembley Arena at 12. And... I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna get into an argument with Elton. I was on a TV show with him once, and he got mad because I took off his hat. I didn't know he was bald and wore a toupee. I had no clue. But I guess he was afraid when I took off the hat that the toupee would come flying off. It didn't. And but he got really upset. And Bon Jovi was on that show with us, and Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi thought it was funny. I I thought it was funny too. But anyway, let's go on. Greg always thought I was sexy, and well, he's correct. <clears throat> that um, that is, uh, and and to to prove it, one of the last editions of Playgirl, they voted ten sexiest males, and I believe Harrison Ford was number two. I can't remember who was number one, uh, but good old Meatloaf here at. 267 pounds was the 10th sexiest male in the world. Right on, dude. So Greg, Greg must be the most intelligent one of the bunch. And so <clears throat> then Ravi, 
who would do anything for love. Now, I'm going to question that. I, I, I'm just me, between me and you, I'm questioning. And then I've got menace, who likes to eat actual meatloaf. Well, I have one question. What the hell's wrong with that? It, and, it's, and you spelled it right. You spell the food. Meatloaf is two words as the food. And meatloaf, the artist, is, I mean, meatloaf, the food is one word. And meatloaf, the artist, <clears throat> is two words. So when you talk to me, you don't say meatloaf. You go meat. Hey, meat, so what do you think about this? Or meat, what do you think about that? So it's just meat. And it's been meat since I was four days old. I didn't come up, we didn't sit in a room and go, well, let's think of a great name. Let's call ourselves the Barking Dogs. No, you can call yourself, let's call you Woodchop. No, let's call yourself Woodshop. How about Woody the Plank? How about Plankwood? How about Raving Forest? How about Raving Lunatic? Because you sort of are, or anything. No, the record company, after, okay, <clears throat> We got signed to a record company and they wanted us to do two songs of theirs. We said no. So they dropped us. Then we got signed to Todd Rungren's label, but the album became too expensive. He thought he could cut the album for like 35000 and he got to 75000 and went, no, I can't do it. So he turned it over to another company, his manager, who I can't remember his name, but famous. I can't believe it. And I'm not going to spend the time on the internet right now to look it up. And we went to his record company, and the album came to a $100,000 budget. It became too expensive for him. So the president at the time of uh, Warner Brothers, um, oh, man, I can't remember anything, came in. I sang for him. He wanted to sign us to Warner Brothers. So he brought us all. I brought Ellen Foley, me, Rory Dodd, Jim, all out to California, to present to the entire record company. And we went in the office of, um, I just had his name before I was gonna tell you. Good Lord, boy, I tell you, when you get to be 37, you start losing your memory. And anyway, I sang it for him, and his girlfriend was Jennifer Warren. Um, uh, anyway, we sang the songs for them. And uh, Mo Austin, that's, Mo Austin ran the company. Moss was sitting there with a big grin on his face, loving everything. And other people, the head of publishing was loving it. The head of publicity was loving it. Oh, they were all going crazy. But, <clears throat> and I made out with Ellen on Paradise. And um, he, Mo got up and said, great, glad to see you. This guy, the head of A&R, flipped out and told them, we're not signing that trash to this label. And we went out that night with the head of uh, publicity or the head of the head of merchant uh, advertising, who absolutely went crazy. And we sit there at the table, the four of us with some other people from Warner Brothers at a great restaurant, had a great evening, doing great things. He was talking about how he could push it, how he, he could promote me, the name Meatloaf, and we we're going, no, no, it's a band name. And he goes, well, I can do that too. And um, I can't remember what the band name is. Even on one and two, I couldn't remember it. But, and so then later on, the next day, David Sonnenberg, our manager, came in and said, listen, <clears throat> I made some phone calls to uh, Miami Steve, little Steven, as he's known. He was known Miami Steve back then. And uh, uh, I'm trying to set you up a deal at a new label Steve Popovich, who was head of a and I said, well, we sang for Steve. And he liked us, but the rest of the company didn't want to know about us. And, um, which was all, most people, I mean, Clive Davis was the kicker. Clive Davis, oh, Clive Davis made me so angry. Clive Davis looked at me and said, <clears throat> and he knew that I was an actor, that I knew I had done Broadway. I'd done four Broadway shows at that point. And I hadn't done the fifth one. Uh, and uh, Rocky Horror being one of them, and uh, Hair being another, and soon, soon as it opened and closed, 
and one more, and the fifth one is Rock by Hamlet, and as soon as that opened, it should have closed. But anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the one thing that happened in Rock by Hamlet, girl, Beverly and Angela became my girlfriend, and we were engaged, but later on, we broke up, and Al Pacino, it became Al Pacino's girlfriend, and had his twin sons or daughters. And Al Pacino still doesn't like it that Beverly was with me. Ooh, too bad, Al. So anyway, like I said, you know, I got an offer you can't refuse. So anyway, um, so then David said, and Warner Brothers has turned you down, but we're staying here and we're not telling anybody. I said, turn us down, why? We went to dinner, it was great. He goes, the head of A&R went crazy because you made out in his office with Ellen. I said, what? And he goes, yeah, he thought it was sexually explicit. Now, I want to see this guy with Carney B now, okay? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. So anyway, can you believe Joe Biden did an interview with this girl, Car C Carney B? He doesn't even know who he's doing an interview with. He, a politician doing an interview with an explicit art, I mean, that's explicit. And they thought paradise was bad because it talked about going to second base and then going to third base. But before you could go all the way, it was stop right there. They, that should have been great for parents. But no, and so anyway, um, so anyway, he said, we're gonna stay here for another three days acting like, and Mo Austin's agreed to continue to pay for as long as we stayed up to a week. And so we just stayed there and hung out and went down to dinner and I met this girl and and got to know her and then she had a twin sister and I got to know both of them. We won't go into that, but the girl was crazy because she came to New York later on with an engagement ring and moved in my apartment, threw my furniture out on the street and got this new furniture and I went crazy, threw her out, got the furniture pulled back, got mine off the street and put it in the apartment and this girl, oh my God, Good Lord, you, yeah, well, I'm a sex god. That's my problem. So anyway, um, anyway, so we went to Cleveland International and little Stephen told Steve Popovich that the beginning of Took the Words was the best opening of any song in rock and roll history. And whatever little Stephen told Steve Popovich that day was absolute Bible gospel. And Steve had to have us on his label. The only thing was, when we got in there, he did not want the band name that Jim Steinman and I had. He said, if you don't put Meatloaf on the cover, I'm not signing it. So after all that, going into office after office after office, we... Jim and I went, I just looked at him and Jim shook his head yes and I went, okay. And so that was it. It was me love on the album because we wanted it out. And it, we proved people wrong and the entertainment business, or not the old one, but the, the music business does not like us for that fact that we proved so many of them wrong. And, uh, but guys like you, you play the music, you prove them wrong and I like you for it. So, one, two, three. I'm sending my love right now to my favorite radio show, The Woody Show. And you know what? I'm sending my love to Greg. I'm sending my love to Ravy. I'm sending love my, to Menace. And I'm sending my love to Seabass. So, if you're not listening to The Woody Show, you're wrong. Keep rocking. There's your ad, guys. So, anyway, now to all of you, last two words. Keep rocking. Right on.